here we go again. Hi there, you're watching Midwinter Minis, my name's Guy, and in this video we're going to be covering how to efficiently paint the Guardian drones from the Ascension expansion of Games Workshop's board game, Blackstone Fortress. As with the other videos in this series, I'll be using the same selection of 14 basic paints, cheap synthetic brushes, and time-saving techniques to help get your models ready for game night. You can obviously use whatever paints you like, but if you want to know specifics, you can find all the details of what I'm using in the video description. Inside the Ascension expansion, along with loads of new tiles, counters, and books for the game, you get two identical sprues for the Guardian drone models, at the moment exclusively available in this set. Just a few pointers on the prep before we start painting. As with all your models, you'll want to take a few minutes scraping off the obvious mold lines and sprue contact points with the back of your hobby knife. This way, you'll minimize the ugly lines being accentuated by washes and dry brushing. These models are obviously very spindly and quite fragile, so it's a good idea to support them with a finger whenever you apply pressure. You get two mini arm options to differentiate the two models, meaning you'll have spares of each, a fun little addition to your bits box. Just don't forget to actually slot in the arms between the two leg sections when you assemble them, otherwise it'll be very fiddly to fix afterwards. To match our other Blackstone Fortress bases, I used a spongy nail file to smooth the surface of each model's base, and then once the models were attached, I used blobs of superglue, dotted the bases with a few pieces of aquarium gravel, and sprinkled sand over the top to look like fallen debris. I then cut out little triangles of the assembly guide and glued them to the surface as well. Try to mix it up a little bit, as both of these models are essentially identical, a unique base will make them look a little bit more interesting. Okay, we're ready to get some paint down. The first thing we want to do is prime them. This will give our acrylic model paint something to stick to, but we can also use the primer a bit creatively to add some cool lighting effects. Throughout this series, I've used three different primers, a black, a gray, and a white. I use at least one of these on pretty much every single model I paint, so they're a great thing to pick up next time you're at a hardware store. I get the best results from plastic primers, and these cans are from Halfords, a UK-based car and bike accessory shop. They go on smooth and are really durable. Ah, oh, my palette's looking a bit messy too. Let's just magic wand this. There we go. Who's got time to clean a paint palette? Just prime them. Now onto the models. First we'll use the black spray to catch the underside of the models, aiming upwards in a kind of 45 degree arc and rotating the model and spraying in short bursts. After doing this, you should have something that looks like this. You can see that we've still got some bare plastic visible on the middle and top sections, and that's absolutely fine. But now we're going to switch out to grey primer, and spray both models face on, aiming at the main carapace armour. So a few short bursts to the face, and then from the top, trying to angle it so that you miss the cybernetic gribbly bits on the underside of the armour. After the grey, here's how it should look. For the final touch, and to really push that quick, cheaty highlight, we'll use our white spray to give it a light dusting just from above. Here we go. Here's what a huge difference that final white burst on the model on the right makes to the overall vibrancy. Okay, priming done. Let's start the timer and get painting. For the first step, we'll use black wash to tint the spindly legs a bit darker and accentuate the recesses a bit. I actually just ran out of Nuln Oil, the citadel shade paint I've been using all this time. I'm going to try this Vallejo Blackwash as a replacement and see how it goes. Just a quick tip, you'll get much better coverage with your wash paints if you moisten your brush in your water pot first, otherwise the brush just hydrates with the thin paint and it takes more paint and more work to get it to flow nicely. Paint the legs, the spindly arms, the cybernetic stuff on its back, and the recesses around the rocket launcher things. If you're clumsy like me and you accidentally get black wash on the top armour panels, don't worry about it. Just get all the paint off your brush, wet it in your water pot, and flood the area on the model as soon as you can. Then dry off your brush again and wick away all that moisture, and it should be fixed. Before we move on to the next paint, it would also be a good idea to hit any of the debris you added to the base with black wash too. Now let's tint the carapace armour blue. To do this, let's create our own wash by mixing blue paint and water in a 1 to 6 ratio. So here I'm using 2 drops of paint with 12 drops of water. Uh, guy, your water looks a bit gross. <laughs> well spotted, it's not actually water, it's the DIY thinning medium I've been using recently. You can still use water and it'll still look great, but using this medium makes glazes like this dry a little bit smoother. I'll make a short video on how to make this soon, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. To make sure I've got the right consistency, I draw a little smiley face on my palette with black ink. If I can just about see the smiley face through the glaze, it's probably thin enough. Now let's paint this blue glaze all over the carapace. 
quite an easy step. And don't forget the little dangly flaps on the outside edges of the rocket launcher things. And if you've used the drone repairing arm, don't forget to tint the carapace armor on the mini drone too. If the wash is pooling a bit too much in some areas, wet your brush and wick it away from those recesses, and then leave your model to dry for a few minutes. Grab a coffee or something, and then when you come back, we'll start to buff up the detail with some dry brushing. Grab your favorite white paint and squirt out a few drops onto your palette. Now taking an old paintbrush with large soft bristles that doesn't come to a point anymore, dab it into the white paint, and then do your best to wipe off all of that paint onto something absorbent like paper towel or some scrap cardboard like I'm using. When you can wipe it on the card and it looks like it's leaving almost no paint behind, now's the time to start sweeping your brush across the carapace of your model. Just sweep your brush across the ridges and sticky out bits, nice and softly. These models are pretty fragile, so you don't want to be putting too much pressure on the spindly legs. Support the back of the carapace with your finger to take the strain off a bit. All we're trying to do here is buff some of the more prominent bits with a bit of white, giving it a smooth, soft highlight, and leaving the blue shaded areas in the recesses alone. Here's what the dry brush adds, side by side with a mini that hasn't had it yet. Pretty striking improvement, huh? And it only took a few minutes. We can also add a bit of this dry brushed white to the sharpest bits of the legs and the tiny T-Rex arms, but be very sparing with this. Just try to catch a few details here and there. We don't want to highlight every single bit. And while we're at it, we can also dry brush the basing elements to make them stand out a bit. Next up, we'll switch out to black paint, thin it with a little water so it flows nicely, and paint each of the base's flat surfaces and rims, being careful to avoid the rubble that we just painted. Right then, now's probably a good time to paint the laser eyeballs. You can obviously paint them whatever colour you like, but I'm going to go for a kind of purpley pink, similar to the box art. By mixing purple and white together in equal parts, it'll create a nice base colour to work up to a brighter shine. Paint this all over the laser eyeball in both models, and then add a little bit more white into that pinky purple on the palette. And now paint this onto the centre of the laser balls, leaving the original colour still visible around the outside edge. Now do this again and again, adding a little bit more white each time, until you're basically just adding a dot of almost pure white to the very centre of the orb. The tiny drone being repaired is much smaller than the regular spindle drone minis, so you'll probably want to grab your detail brush to paint on its red eye lens. We can also highlight just like we did back in the original spindle drone video with a simple dot of yellow paint. While we've got our detail brush out, we can do a little bit of easy panel lining to really boost the contrast. Grab your favourite brown wash, and using your small brush, just sink a little bit of this thin brown wash into the recesses between the armour plates, and any cracks and crevices that you think could do with being a bit darker. Here's what that step looks like compared to not doing it. The model on the right has had some brown recess shading applied, and as you can see it really adds another level of depth and a little bit of subtle colour to the shadows. Now let's do the opposite. By mixing a tiny bit of white paint into water or thinning medium, we can make a very subtle highlight glaze paint that we'll use to add a few highlights here and there, but in a much more controlled and precise way than just dry brushing allows. Any particularly pointy ridges on the armour, the orbs and sharper shapes on the legs, the edges of all the holes on the missile launches, anywhere that you think looks a little bit dull, you can give it a lift with this highlight colour. It's very, very thin, and it'll look very bright when you put it on, but when it dries, it should be much more dull and subtle, don't worry. Here's a little side-by-side -side comparison again. You can see that the model on the right, the one with the manual highlights, has a bit more of a smooth, intentional look to it, rather than the slightly dusty look that the one on the left has. To finish the job, and a totally optional extra, I added a tiny bit of gloss varnish to the laser balls to make them all shiny and catch the light. And there we go! Less than 25 minutes of hands-on painting time per model, and the Guardian drones are ready to deliver the final challenge to your explorers in the Blackstone Fortress. I finished off their bases following the step-by-step -step guide I made a couple of years ago. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. And this is actually the final episode of my speed painting Blackstone Fortress series. The first episode went live on December 30th, 2018, just as the channel hit 1,000 subscribers. Now, in April 2021, at almost 220,000 subscribers and 31 videos in the series later, and I have a full, comprehensive painting guide for every miniature from the main game and every single boxed expansion for Blackstone Fortress. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed following along. 
If you are new to miniature painting, I hope I succeeded in my aim to give you a bit of confidence to get your minis painted and game ready, and to maybe make the process a little bit more fun and less laborious. And maybe if you are already an experienced painter, I hope I maybe showed you a few tips and tricks along the way too. Now I'm not quite done with Blackstone Fortress yet though. I do have one more surprise for you, but I'll let you know about that in another video. Any guesses? Let me know what you think it might be in the comments while I thank our most recent Patreon supporters for joining up. Troy Herod, Demon Knight, Penny Lane, Mark Rhodes, Luke Milford Demet, Samus, Dominic Kirwan, My Chemical Raven Guard, Dan Montnamy, James Whitehouse, Sean Wyatt McTaggart, Andrew Gunter, Delicious Cookies, Zero Zero Beans, Luke Cordell, Joe Wynn, Phil's Mini Painting, and Ethan Boosfield. If you want to help support the channel, there's links to our Patreon page and t-shirts in the video description. You've been watching Midwinter Minis, my name's Guy, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.